everybody, and welcome to Nightline. I am your host for this evening. I am Annie T. Broughton, and as always, I am so thankful to the good Lord for just this opportunity, this privilege to just being in your home on this evening. We're going to have such a wonderful time. The Holy Spirit is here. We prayed before we came on the air. So I know that God is going to move by his power, by his might, by his spirit. So what we're going to ask you to do tonight is call someone and ask them to tune into Nightline tonight. I do have a word from the Lord that I would love to share with you on tonight. I want to read our opening scripture. It's lifted from Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, the sixth chapter, third verse uh, from the New King James Version. So it reads, so I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? My topic tonight is stay on the wall. So I'm really excited about this word tonight. I'm excited about what the Holy Spirit is going to share with you. Uh, how the Holy Spirit is going to encourage you uh, in your walk with the Lord and how God is going to bless tonight. Tonight, our musical guest is none other than Keith Wonderboy Johnson. So we're giving our music in tribute to him tonight, uh, how God used him so mightily and blessed our lives when he was here in this earth realm. To God be all the glory. We're believing God tonight for a wonderful time in the Lord. We do have some amazing uh, prayer partners on hand. We would love for you to call in tonight. We want to hear from you. The number is on the screen. And I tell you what, if you're going through anything at all, if you need prayer tonight for anything at all, just call us tonight. We want to hear from you. If you have a praise report that you want to share, call us tonight because we want to hear what you have to say. And we want to praise God with you. Right now, we're getting ready to go to Keith Wonderboy Johnson, and he's getting ready to sing Almighty God. Amen. I need everybody. Help me give him some praise. An old-fashioned song that helped me say, oh, Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. I, I want you to. to the home. Tell them what you want, tell them what you need, talk to the Lord, tell them what you want, tell them what you need, tell the Lord, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, I tell them to run. In the midnight hour, when you can't sleep, late at night, tossing and turning, tossing and turning, tossing and turning, all night long, tell the Lord, give me peace, peace of mind, so I can sleep, late at night, tell the Lord, wrong me. Thank you. 
Heal me. Heal me. Somebody out there. The doctor gave you a bad report. The doctor said might be cancer. Should you die? Pressure might be loose. All you got to do, don't get on your telephone. Tell the Lord, uh, heal me. Heal me. Uh, heal me. Uh, heal me uh, yeah. I feel good. I'll do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. In my home. Child, uh, in my hell, I feel a praise break coming right now. Ow! Y'all can stop looking at me and help me praise them. Y'all out there, everybody, let me hear you clap those hands. Come on and clap those hands up. Uh, clap those hands for Jesus. Now life and death lies in the tongue. So speak it in the atmosphere. Tell the Lord, do it. 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 Ah. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. You ought to call. Tell somebody you need to text. Text somebody. Tell them God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. God's gonna do it. Not next week. Not next month. Not next year. But right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You ought to pray. Praise him in advance. Now, if you believe it, give him some praises with your hands. Come on. Oh! Open up your mouth and give him a praise. Seal that blessing with a praise. He worthy. Tell him hallelujah. Well, that was the amazing, the awesome, the anointed, the gospel singer, Keith Wonderboy Johnson. And I tell you what, he can sing. And I thank God we're just giving tribute to him tonight for him being such an awesome man of God. And he just sang, Almighty God, He, because God is almighty. And I don't mind bragging on him tonight and just giving him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Tonight, I'm going to give a word from the Lord that the Holy Spirit gave to me. And it's lifted from the book of Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, sixth chapter, the third verse. And it reads, so I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work <laughs> so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it? and go down to you. Again, my topic tonight is stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. I believe in my heart that the Holy Spirit gave me this word to share with somebody tonight, a pastor, a leader, some woman of God, some mighty woman of God, that the enemy have been trying to come against you with a vengeance. He wants you to stop the work that God has given you to do. But God told me to tell you tonight that he said to stay on the wall. A few years ago, I was preparing a message but one of my spirituals, one of my spiritual daughters, it was her church anniversary. So she asked me if I would come and, and preach that night. 
I said, sure, I would love to. And as I was preparing to go to her church, this is the message, the same message that I'm preaching tonight to you. This is the message the Holy Spirit had given to me to carry to her, to preach at her church. And it says, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? So I was busy just typing it out and getting prepared to take her this word to encourage her, to encourage my daughter. And all of a sudden I heard the Holy Spirit in my ear and in my spirit talk to me. He said, the message that you are going to take to her, this message is really for you. He said, you are doing a great work and you can't come down. When I heard the Holy Spirit speak that in my spirit, in my heart, you know, I ran and I told my husband, I said, George, I said, God just told me that I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. You know, the enemy would love to discourage us as pastors, as leaders, as whatever we're doing for, for Christ, he wants to stop us. And he tries to send in a spirit of discouragement to make us give up on our assignment, to make us quit, to make us throw in the towel. But I heard the Holy Spirit say, you, my daughter, are doing a great work and you cannot come down. You can't come down from what God have you doing because what you're doing is God's work and God's plan and his assignment on your life. So I feel in my heart tonight that I, by the spirit of the living God, that I, I got to talk to somebody. I got to share with you what the Holy Spirit told me to bring to you tonight, to share with you tonight, because God wants you to be encouraged in your walk with God. He wants you to hold on to his unchanging hand. He wants you to be steadfast and he wants you to be unmovable and, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. He wants you to keep building. He wants you to keep praying. God wants you to keep believing and trusting him and he wants you to stay committed. I feel that in my heart tonight. I want this word to go down in your soul tonight, to go down in your spirit tonight. I want you to be encouraged tonight because God have you on an assignment from heaven. You have been handpicked. You have been chosen by Almighty God. So you can't give up. Don't expect the enemy to to roll out the, the red carpet for you and, and tell you, to, oh, just go merrily on your way. No, he's not going to do that. He's going to do everything he can to stop the plan of God that he has for you. But I remember what Jeremiah 29 and 11 said. He said, for I know the plan that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you not to harm you, plans to give you hope, a future, and a expected end. So, if you are sitting next to anybody in your home or on your couch or wherever you are, I want you to look at, look at them and say, you know what, stay on the wall. <laughs> stay on the wall, keep building, keep praying, and stay committed. Don't get discouraged in your walk with the Lord. In Nehemiah 1, 3, and 4, Nehemiah received the word from his brethren 
that the walls in Jerusalem were broken down and the gates thereof was burnt with fire. So Nehemiah sat down, he wept, he fasted, and he prayed. When he heard that the walls in Jerusalem was burnt down, the gates thereof were burnt down. They was burnt with fire. They was broken down. And Nehemiah began to weep. He wept. When you have an assignment on your life from God, when God is speaking to you, and when things are out of order, or when things are not right, because you have such a deep passion and a great love for what God has called you to do, you, it will cause you to weep. It'll cause you to pray. And it'll cause you to fast. Listen to a portion of the prayer that Nehemiah prayed when he got the news from his brethren that the gates had been burnt with fire and that the walls of Jerusalem were burnt down. Listen to the prayer that Nehemiah prayed. He said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and the awesome God. He said, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. That was just a portion of the prayer that Nehemiah prayed. But he knew within his heart that there was power in his prayer. He knew in his heart that God heard his prayer, that God was going to answer him, and that God was going to work everything out just right. Can I tell you tonight that God hears your prayers? Can I tell you tonight that, that there's nothing too hard for our God to do? Can I tell you tonight that God is making a way out of no way? That God is working every detail out on your behalf. All you got to do is stay on the wall. <laughs> All you got to do is stay committed. All you have to do is stay faithful to God and watch God come to your rescue. In James 5, in the book of James 5 and 16, it reads, confess your faults one to another and pray, pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much to God be all the glory. I'm, it's in my heart to tell you tonight. It's in my spirit to tell you tonight, to encourage you tonight to stay on the wall. Right now we're getting ready to go to Keith Wonderboy Johnson. And he's getting ready to sing Chilly Winds. Amen. <laughs> of the mountain I'm gonna hide behind yeah, hide behind the mountain yeah, I'm gonna hide behind yeah, hide behind the mountain well, I'm going where the shit lay Jesus 
Jesus is, Jesus is the mountain. Do you know that Jesus is the mountain? Yeah, Jesus is the mountain. Well, I know that Jesus is the mountain. Oh, he is the mountain. Well, I'm going well. The Sabbath will have no end. Will you meet me there? Will you meet me there? Somebody got a mug over there. Somebody got a father over there. Won't you be glad to see him again? Jesus, tap yourself and say, I don't want to see Jesus. I don't want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. God of praise right now. I think we ought to give God a hand clap of praise tonight for that song. We're going to hide behind the mouth where the chilly wind don't blow. Tonight I'm talking about stay on the wall. And that's the word of encouragement that I know that the Holy Ghost gave me to tell you tonight that he wants you, God Almighty wants you to stay on the wall. Don't quit. Don't come down. Don't get discouraged. Don't throw in a towel. I'm telling you, God has a great blessing in store for you. He has a blessing that has your name on it. So you stay on the wall in the name of Jesus. This story of Nehemiah shows that God blesses the work of those who work faithfully. God allowed Nehemiah to travel back with the king's blessing to rebuild the walls in the temple of Jerusalem. I'm telling you, God will give you favor. Somebody shout favor. God will give you favor Amen, praise God, with your boss, with your supervisor, with the king. Come on, he'll connect you with the right people to help you on your journey. And the king or whoever it is will supply you with everything you need. 
where God, God, come on somebody, where he guides, he also provides. Let's look at uh, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 1 through verse number 9 from the NIV. It reads, now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. But listen to verse number two. That Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ona. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? I got to stop right there. I'm going to put a pin right there for just a second. Because you, my sister, my brother, you are doing a great work. God himself placed you on this assignment. God himself opened this door for you. God himself ordered your steps. You are doing a great work. So the enemy will love for you to quit. He will love for you to come down. He will love for you to, to give up. But you have to be that, you have to be just like Nehemiah. Nehemiah sent a word back and said, listen, I'm doing a great work. Why should I leave it? and calm down to you. I got to tell somebody tonight. I got to keep encouraging you tonight. Pastor, come on, listen to me. You're doing a great work. I know it's been hard. I know it's been challenging. I know the devil's been fighting you tooth and nail. But you stay on that wall. Come on, you're winning souls for Christ. The Bible didn't say the battle would be easy, but he didn't say I would be with you in the battle. So I want to encourage you tonight. Nehemiah had sent a word back and tell them, I am doing a great work and I can't come down. Number four says, yet, they sent unto me four times, somebody say four times, after this sword, and I answered them after the same manner. <laughs> then sent Sam Bally, his servant, unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. You, you know, it's like, you know how the enemy is? He, he keep trying to, to nag at you and, and, to, and to pull you down out of that blessed place where God now put you. You know, yes, like I said, you may have gone through some challenging times. You may have gone through some difficult times. Amen, praise God. But every time the enemy come against you, just cast it down, just say no. You know, you got to tell the devil. You got to put the devil in his place and let him know who you are and let him know whose you are that you are a child of the living God, <laughs> that the hand of God is on your life, that you are committed to do what God has called you to do, that you're not going to quit, that you're not going to throw in a towel, that you're not going to give up, but you're going to stay on the wall, that you're not coming down. Five times they sent for him to come down. Listen to verse number six. It says, wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen that Gashmu says it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach 
of thee in Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now it shall be reported to the king of Mark according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. They wouldn't give up. I know the enemy ain't going to give up. He's going to keep coming at you. He's going to keep trying because you're doing a great work. Come on, you're doing something that's making a difference in this world. You're doing something so mighty that's making a difference in this neighborhood, in your community. And the enemy don't like that. So he wants to get you to quit and throw in the towel. He said, let us counsel together. No, we're not doing that. It ain't nothing you can say to me, and ain't nothing I want to say to you. Verse number eight says, Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such thing done as thou sayest, but thou fainted them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, Our hand shall be weakened from the work that it not be done. Now therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hand. You got to ask God to strengthen you. You got to ask God to strengthen your hands. You got to ask God to help you to keep going, to keep building, and to keep on praying. You got to get down on your knees and call out to God. You got to raise your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you. I can't make it without you. All that I am and all that I hope to be is in you. Psalms 28, 7 and 8 says, The Lord is my strength and he's my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. He helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. Come on, you got to ask God for strength tonight. You got to ask God to strengthen your hands and strengthen your feeble knees. You, you got to ask God to, to come to your rescue. You got to let him know what the enemy is fighting against you with. You got to let him know that, that God, I need you right now. Listen, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. I don't mind getting down on my knees. I don't mind calling out to the Lord because God has given me a great work and I can't come down. So I want to encourage you tonight by the spirit of the living God that you cannot come down. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Nehemiah knew that they was trying to distract him from doing what God himself had called him to do. But Nehemiah had spiritual discernment. You got to ask God for discernment because sometimes something may seem like it's right when it's not. You can't go behind everything that somebody brings to you. You got to praise the Lord, is this you or not? Nehemiah knew that the enemy was trying to get him not to build the walls in Jerusalem. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, no weapon. Can you say that with me tonight? No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. In every tongue, I don't care whose tongue it is, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, you can condemn those tongues. You can do it. You cast them down. You put the devil under your feet. In the name of Jesus, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And righteousness is of me, says the Lord. You got to stay focused. You got to stay committed. Come on, you can't give up now. You've come too far. Come on, you're almost at the end. Come on, I see a light shining at the end of the tunnel. Keep going towards that light. Keep praying. Keep believing God. Nehemiah knew it was a distraction. 
He knew the enemy was trying to fight against him. But he knew he had the favor of God. Come on, he knew that the Lord was on his side. And if God be for you, <laughs> come on, pastor. Come on, leader. Come on, mama. Come on, if, if God be for you, and he is, who can be against you? You are blessed, somebody. God called you to be the head and not the tail. He called you to be over and not beneath. And everything your hands touch shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. We're getting ready to go back to Keith Wonderboy Johnson. And guess what? He's going to be singing. He's going to be singing, testify. Amen. <laughs> some old-fashioned church when I said, if you say that you've been born again, you ought to stand up and testify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you say that you've been sanctified, you ought to stand up and testify. Here's the reason why God's been good to you. He's been good to me. You ought to stand up and testify. Yeah. Testify. You ought to stand up and testify. You ought to stand up and testify. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. So wherever you at, God, come on, clap those hands. Clap them hands of Jesus. I'm going to name a few things. Woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. You see, yeah. let you see another day. Yeah. Somebody tell the lawyer. 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 Yeah. 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 You want to stand up and testify. And testify. You understand up and testify. and testify. When I think of the goodness of Jesus Christ. And I He's done for me. I got the, 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 I got the test of that. I'm going to name some old things. You ought to be a witness. He put a roof over your head. Clothes on your back. Food on your table. Ain't the Lord able? Somebody tell the lawyer. Somebody tell the lawyer. Somebody tell the lawyer. Somebody tell the lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, testify. Come on, testify. Because God's he been good. Because God's he been good. He been mighty, mighty good. He been mighty, 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 mighty good. If you know he been good, you ought to show Sometimes you ought to tell somebody, you ought to call somebody, tell them God's been good. So 
right now, I'm gonna testify. Right now, I'm gonna testify. Right now, I'm gonna testify. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Somebody feel like me. Somebody feel like me. So right now, I'm gonna testify for the blessings on the way. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Do you? You believe? It's coming, so you ought to give him a praise right now. Loud! Loud! Clap your hands and give him a praise. <laughs> I tell you what, you need to clap your hands and give God a praise, and you need to testify. Amen, praise God. But guess what? In Nehemiah 6, 15 and 16, from the NIV version, this is what it says. It says, so the wall <laughs> was completed on the 25th of Elor <laughs> in 52 days. Somebody say 52 days. 52 days. <laughs> And verse number 16 says, when all our enemies <laughs> heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work, your work, this work that God put in your hand to do, this work, had been done with the help of our God. I tell you what, that's something to testify about. Nehemiah could testify, and when people heard about it, <laughs> that the wall had been completed in 52 days, they lost their self-confidence. Let me tell you something, God, is using you to do a great work. God himself is using you to build a wall in your home, in your family, on your job, in your community, in your church. Come on, you keep on praying, you keep on believing, and you keep on trusting God. God wants you tonight. I brought my hammer. He wants you to get your hammer out and keep building. Get your hammer out and keep praying. Get your hammer out and say, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to build, come on, one more day. I'm going to build one more month. I'm going to build one more year. I'm not coming down off this wall. And what God have called you to do, I want to decree to somebody tonight that a door is getting ready to open for you in 52 days. That an opportunity is coming your way in 52 days. And listen, when it happens, I want you to call the prayer partners at the end of 52 days or even before then, if God moved for you. If God heals your body within 52 days, I want you to call and, and say, I stayed on the wall. I kept praying, I, keep, I kept going, I didn't quit. If God give you a new house, come on, or he helped you to pay the mortgage off the house you got. If God helps you to get out of debt, Come on, if God bless you with another car, come on, call in and say, listen, it happened within 52 days. That wall went up and people heard about it. God's going to let some people hear about what he's doing in your life. The doctors are going to be amazed. That lawyer is going to be amazed. Come on, the preacher is going to be amazed because you're going to stand up and testify about the goodness of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 from the King James Version says, Therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, 
Some I say steadfast, unmovable, always, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain. Come on, get your hammer out. Let that be your way of letting the devil know, I ain't quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm going to keep on building. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on fasting. And I'm going to keep on believing God. Is there anything, come on somebody, help me tonight. Call me tonight and let me know, is there anything that our God cannot do? Come on, the only thing that God can't do is fail. There's no failure in him. You are blessed somebody. God called you. He anointed you. And he appointed you. Amen. Praise God. Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king. But God had an assignment on his life. And when the word came to him and told him what was going on in Jerusalem, Nehemiah felt in his belly and his spirit, I got to go and do something about this. You've been feeling God moving in your heart tonight. You know God has an assignment on your life. You know he's called you to do greater things, greater works, greater works are on the inside of you. And all you got to do is come on, just go and just step out. So I'm going to walk in whatever God called me to walk in. And I promise you by the spirit of the living God that God will give you favor who you need to have favor with. God will open doors. For you. You ain't got to open the door. God is going to open them. But when he opens the door, what he wants you to do is be standing right there. So when the door opens, all you got to do is walk on in. The hand of the Lord is on your life. He's a promise-keeping God. He's a way-making God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Come on, don't let the enemy make you think you can't do it because you can. When he tells you to give up, when he tells you to quit, when he tells you to come down, you say, no devil, get your helmet out and let him see it. <laughs> so I'm doing a great work. Come on, I'm building. I'm praying and I'm believing. I'm doing a great work and I can't. Come down. The Lord will fight for you. And the only thing you have to do is stand still and hold your peace and stay on that wall. Listen, you're the one that's up on the wall. Nehemiah, all the rest of them, they down in the valley. They're trying to get you to come down. No, you stay up. You stay up where God planted you and where God placed you and you keep on building. Oh my God, tonight we have been truly blessed tonight by Keith Wonderboy Johnson's music tonight. But he's getting ready to sing, keep pushing. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> You're feeling down and out that the seem to be working Tired from two jobs And your body still ain't hurting You feel like there's no help No help at all 
You feel like the best ain't good enough, but you got, you got to stand tall. Don't give up. Don't give in. You got to keep on pushing. Oh, you feel it down and out. Another scene to be working. It's high from two jobs. And your body's steady hurting. You feel like there's no help, no help at all. You feel like the best ain't good enough, but you got, you got to stand tall. Don't give up. Don't give in. You got to keep on. I'm about to warm up a little bit. Uh, come on, come on, clap them hands. Uh, come on, clap the hands. Uh, come on, clap the hands. Uh, the ghost looking at me right now. Uh, come on, clap those hands. Uh, come on, clap those hands. Let's give God some praise. Uh, let's give God some praise. Don't give up. Don't give in. You got to keep on pushing. Uh, That there seem to be working Tired from two jobs uh, And your body steady hurting You feel like there's no help No help at all You feel like your best ain't good enough But you got to, got to stand tall Don't give up Don't give in You gotta keep on pushing uh, Remember, don't give up Don't give in You gotta keep on pushing No matter what you doing? Don't give up. Don't give in. You keep on pushing. My feet getting light. I feel like dancing. Ow! Well, I keep turning the track up a little bit. I feel like dancing. Keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Remember, don't give up. Don't you give up, but don't you go in the towel. Keep on, keep on going. Get up off that couch. Go and get your resume together. Put that application in and go and get that job. You can achieve if you believe. So you got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on pushing. Don't you give up. I pray tonight that this word from the Lord encourage your heart that you're going to stay on the wall, that you're not going to give up, but you're going to keep on pushing to the glory of God. And also Psalms 127 one says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Let God help you to stay on that wall and do everything that he has put in your heart to do. Tonight, we had a salvation report called in. And I am truly thankful to the good Lord for this salvation report because to me, when you call in and you give your heart to the Lord, it's worth it all. To God be all the glory. Someone called in and said, pray for Rebecca, who is dealing with a hernia. Pray also for financial help. Rebecca, we're praying for you tonight. Someone else called in and said, head and chest congestion. We believe in God with you on tonight. Someone else called in and said, they have an eye problem. We know God is able to heal Come on, he opened the blind man's eyes. So we know he's going to heal your eye. Someone else called in and said, praying for salvation, protection, good decisions, good health, and healing for their body. Tim, Dennis, Papa Jones, Melanie, Billy, Stephanie, 
called in, said they believe in God for healing tonight. I want you to know that we have some amazing prayer partners. And when you called in, they would take your prayer request straight to the throne of grace and believe God with you for you to be healed. I have a scripture pertaining to your healing tonight from Isaiah 53, 5 through verse number 8 from the King James Version. It says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight for your word telling us to stay on the wall. Thank you, Lord God, for your healing power and for your saving grace. Remember all of our military men and women, boys and girls. Remember those in the hospital or in the nursing home or those who are on the street. Remember those who got a bad report from the doctor. And thank you, Lord God, for the one who called in tonight and gave their heart to you. In the name of Jesus, we're believing tonight that God is going to bless you, prosper you, and keep you in all your ways. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray, and we give God all the glory. In Jesus' name, let the whole church body say amen and amen. 